here is chapter two of Hound Dog True. Here we go. Uncle Potluck slides the new bulb into its socket and slips the gray cover into its place among the ceiling tiles. Maddie has to move so he can step down the ladder, but she's close enough to hear the hooting sound he makes on the third step. It's his traitorous knee that makes him hoot. The tiny sting of it when he's taking the stairs, kneeling or getting up from having sat still for a movie. The word traitorous is one of our vocabulary words too. He's got surgery planned for a few months from now. From Christmas vacation. That's why this move back to Uncle Potluck's to the house where he and Mama and their brothers grew up. I've planned it all out, Mama told Maddie. Potluck will need some help around Christmas. By then I'll have some vacation time and you'll all be set and you'll be all settled in and comfortable at school. Mama's first two fingers fluttered on her thumb, like the piccolo player Maddie had seen once. Except when the piccolo man did it, he was making music. When Mama's fingers moved that way, it meant she was making plans. Her fingers moving as fast as the thoughts in her head. It was time for a new job anyway. My old boss was getting grouchy, and there was a talk and there was talk of layoffs. And when the going gets tough, Mama had waited then, like she always did, waited for Maddie to say, "The tough get going." which Maddie always said and Mama always took to mean that Maddie was fine with moving again, whether she was or not. This time, though, Maddie had been happy since moving meant being with Uncle Potluck. So here we can tell that they're a close family um, because she's excited to um, go and move there. Let's keep reading. Maddie, Uncle Potluck clatters the ladder flat, puts it on his shoulder. Will you carry the descendant? by which he means for her to get the box with the old light bulb in it. Down the main hallway of Mitchell P. Anderson Elementary they go. Uncle Potluck first, Maddie following. You can't tell he's got a traitorous knee when he's walking. He just walks steady and strong. Past the drinking fountain and the restrooms and the gymnasium slash stage slash cafeteria. At the administrative office, he stops long enough to salute the gold frame picture of Principal Bonnet that hangs outside the door. And then they are off again, rounding the corner and heading to the end of the hall, past the art room, past the music room, to a pair of orange doors marked authorized personnel. Do you guys know what that word means, authorized? Look it up. That's where Uncle Potluck keeps his office. It is a neat office with a desk tucked snug under the hot water pipe and walls covered in pegboard. Uncle Potluck hangs his tools on those walls. He's drawn white lines around them too, like the ones they draw around dead bodies on TV shows, except dead body lines are about mysteries and Uncle Potluck's lines are about things being for sure where they belong. So he's organized. Broom in the broom spot, wrench in the wrench spot, there's even an outline for Uncle Potluck's hat, though mostly that spot stays empty. Things that don't belong on the walls have a shelf spot or drawer spots, all of them labeled neat. Screws, glue, tape, extension cords, string. Uncle Potluck's chair has a label too. Director of Custodial Arts, it says on the back, neat and square. Mama is neat too, Maddie thinks. But Mama's neat is about getting rid of things. Every time she and Maddie moved, things got left behind. Toasters and TV trays and Maddie's dollhouse, all left by the driveway, a free sign propped against them. Mama never owns more than can fit in a pickup truck. When Maddie was real little, she would buckle herself into the truck before any boxes got packed, afraid maybe there wouldn't be room for her used to think that was what had happened to her father, that he hadn't fit in the truck and Mama had driven off. Really, he was just too young to get married, so he drove off himself. Maddie pushes the director of custodial arts chair up to the desk so Uncle Potluck can maneuver the ladder, watches him hang it firm in the ladder spot, 
sees a spot marked recycling and sets the bowl box there, which is exactly where it goes. So where they are right now is like Miss Anna's office next to Mr. Gleason's gym in our school. Maddie May, Uncle Potluck says, I have a mind to declare you too talented for this here school and take you on as an apprentice. You know what an apprentice is? We'll talk about it. And it feels like Uncle Potluck has drawn a fat white belonging line around her. Maddie May Breen, custodial apprentice. And that was chapter two. Stay tuned for chapter three.